hey what's up everyone welcome back to my channel today we are continuing our deep dive into building an api gateway with ocelot in asp.net core in the last video we covered the basics of routing with ocelot and now we are taking things up a notch with authentication and authorization it's time to lock things down and make sure only the right people get access to our apis so grab your coffee hit that like button and let's get started also, the complete code for these projects is up on my GitHub, so feel free to download it and follow along. The link is in the description below. Okay, so first off, let's talk about what we are doing today. We have got two projects already set up, Target API and Gateway API. Our Gateway API is the like bouncer at the club. It checks who's coming in and makes sure they're allowed. And the Target API is the actual club, where all the cool stuff happens, like API responses. Now, if you are thinking, what does authentication and authorization even mean? Don't worry, I've got you. Authentication is like showing your ID at the door and authorization is whether you are on the VIP list or not. Let's see how we do this in code. Okay, before we dive into the code, let's talk about the two key nugget packages we'll be using. ASP.NET Core.Authentication.JWT Bearer. This package is crucial because it provides the middleware needed to handle JSON Web Token authentication in ASP.NET Core applications. This package simplifies the process of validating JWT tokens in your application, ensuring that only valid and authenticated requests are processed. Identity model tokens JWT. This package is responsible for creating, validating, and manipulating JWT tokens. It provides classes and methods to work with JWT tokens, such as creating tokens with claims, signing them with security keys, and validating tokens against various parameters like the issuer, audience, and signature. This package is essential for both generating and validating JWT tokens, making it a backbone of any JWT-based authentication system. Now that we know what these packages do, let's go ahead and install them in our projects. To start, you will need to add these packages to both the Target API Sample and Gateway API Sample projects. In Visual Studio, right-click on the project and select Manage NuGet Packages, and then in this box, find your packages. By installing these packages, you are equipping your project with all the tools necessary to handle JWT authentication effectively. With the packages installed, the next step is to configure JWT authentication in the Target API and Gateway API projects. This will ensure that the API validates incoming JWT tokens, allowing access only to authenticated users. Alright, so now that we've got the necessary NuGet packages installed, it's time to dive into configuring JWT in the program.cs file of our target API project. We are going to set this up so that our API can authenticate requests using JSON Web Tokens. Let's get into it. First things first, Go ahead and open up your program.cs file in the target API project. This is where all the magic happens. This file is the entry point of your application, and it's where we will configure our services, including JWT authentication. We need to tell our application to use JWT for authentication. To do that, we are going to use the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Authentication.JWT bearer package that we installed earlier. This package gives us a straightforward way to set up JWT. Now that we've got the authentication configured, let's break this down so you really get what's happening here. We start by defining a secret key. This key is used to sign the JWT tokens, ensuring that they are secure and can't be tampered with. We then configure the authentication scheme. Notice we are using JWT bearer defaults that authentication scheme for both default authenticate scheme and default challenge scheme. This tells ASP.NET Core that we want to use JWT bearer tokens for both authenticating requests and handling authentication challenges, like when a user isn't authenticated and tries to access a secure endpoint. Next, we dive into the dot at JWT bearer configuration. Here we do the, a few important things. We set require HTTPS metadata to false for development purposes, but in production you should leave this as true to ensure your tokens are only passed over HTTPS. Setting safe token to true allows the token to be stored in the HTTP context, so it's available for use throughout the request lifecycle. Token validation parameters is where the real security happens. We specify how the JWT should be validated. 
Validate issuer signing key ensures the token signature is valid and was signed using our secret key. Issuer signing key is where we actually pass in the secret key. Validate issuer and validate audience. Finally, we set this to false for simplicity, but in a real world scenario, you typically want to validate the issuer and audience to ensure the token was issued by a trusted source and is meant for your API. Now that we have got the authentication configured, we need to make sure our application actually uses it. For that, scroll down to where you are setting up the middleware and add these lines. By adding app.use authentication and app.use authorization, we are telling the application to check every incoming request for a valid JWT token before allowing it to access any secured endpoints. Finally, to actually protect your API endpoints, just add the authorized attribute to your controller or a specific actions. This ensures that only authenticated users, those who provide a valid JWT token, can access the endpoints under this controller. Alright, so now our target API project is ready to verify JWT tokens. Next up, we need to make sure our Gateway API project plays nice and forwards those tokens. Switch to the Gateway API project. Let's update ocelot.json in the Gateway API project to add authentication. This config tells ocelot when you forward requests to the target API, make sure you are carrying the JWT token. The authentication provider key specifies which authentication scheme to use for validating incoming requests. In this case, bearer refers to JWT bearer authentication scheme that we set up earlier. The allowed scopes option is used to specify a list of OAuth 2.0 scopes that are required to access the downstream service. Scopes are a way to limit the access granted by the token. For example, you might have different scopes for reading data, writing data, or admin access. If the incoming JWT token doesn't contain the required scopes listed here, Ocelot will reject the request with an unauthorized error. Okay, head over to the program.cs file in your Gateway API project. Just like we did with the target API, this is where we will add the JWT configuration. Next, go back to your target API project and copy the JWT configuration code that we added earlier. Then simply paste it into the program.cs file of your gateway API project right after you add controllers with builder.services.addController. Just like before, make sure to add the authentication and authorization middleware in the gateway API project. That's it. You've now set up JWT authentication in both your target API and gateway API. The process is exactly the same for both projects, which makes it easy to manage and consistent across your API services. This setup ensures that only requests with a valid JWT token will be allowed through the gateway and into your target API. Okay, after we have configured program.cs in gateway API project, let's create a new controller in our project. We will call it auth controller. This controller is gonna have a single action method that will handle user authentication and return a JWT token. Go ahead and add a new controller by right clicking on the controllers folder in your project. Selecting add, new item and choosing API controller dash empty. Name it auth controller. The heart of our auth controller is this generate token action. This action is where all the magic happens. This is the part of our API that's responsible for generating the JWT token that we are going to use to authenticate our requests. When you hit this action with a POST request, it's going to do a few things behind the scenes, like verifying your identity, creating some important claims about you, and then packaging all that up into a JWT token. Now let's dive into the code and break down exactly how this action works. Secret key. We start by defining our secret key. This key is crucial because it's used to sign the JWT. Make sure this matches the key you used in your program.cs file for JWT configuration. Credentials. Next, we create signing credentials using the secret key and the HMAC SHA256 algorithm. This ensures the token is secure. Claims. Here we define the claims. Claims are basically pieces of information about the user that are encoded into the token. 
for simplicity we are just adding a subject claim with a value of test user and a unique identifier in a real world scenario these claims would be more detailed potentially including rows permissions etc this is where the magic happens we create a new jwt security token with the issuer audience claims expiration time and signing credentials we are setting the token to expire in 30 minutes but you can adjust this as needed return the token finally we return the generated token as a response this method converts the token object into a string which is what we send back to the client now that our auth control is set up let's test it out run both projects and fire up postman or any api testing tool you prefer the first thing we are going to do is try to call our weather forecast api without any authentication just to see what happens let's jump into postman for this open postman and create a new get request in the request url type this route this is for our gateway api which will forward the request to the target api on port 5001 hit send without setting any authorization or token you should get a 401 unauthorized response this is exactly what we want it means our authentication is working correctly and the api isn't letting anyone through without a valid jwt token all right now that we've confirmed the api is secure let's go ahead and generate a valid jwt token so we can access the data in postman create a new post request set this url this is our auth controller's endpoint that generates the token hit send you don't need to add anybody or headers here for this simple setup you should see a response with a long string of characters this is your jwt token this token is your golden ticket for accessing the secured apis now let's use the token we just generated to access the weather api copy the jwt token from the previous response go back to your original get request for the weather api click on the authorization tab in postman select bearer token from the drop down and paste your token into the field now hit send again this time you should get a 200 ok response with the weather data from the weather api this shows that your token is working and you are now authenticated all right folks that's a wrap for today's session before you start coding on your own don't forget to grab the latest version of this project from my github account the code might have been updated so it's a good idea to make sure you are working with the most current version i'll drop the link to my github in the description below now let's quickly recap what we covered today in this video we took our api gateway setup to the next level we started by securing our APIs with JWT authentication, ensuring that only authenticated users can access our services. We worked through generating a token, using it in Postman, and then hitting our Secured Weather Forecast API. This is a crucial step in building a secure and robust microservices architecture. In the previous session, we focused on setting up Ocelot routing, learning how to configure our API gateway to properly route requests, to the appropriate backend services. Today we added that extra layer of security with authentication and authorization. But we are not stopping here. In the next video, we will dive into load balancing with Ocelot. We are going to make sure our API gateway can handle traffic like a pro, distributing requests evenly across multiple instances of our services to keep things smooth and responsive. So if you found today's video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Your support helps me continue making these videos and I'm really excited about the next part of our journey together. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.